we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Is there psychological progress, the me becoming better, nobler, wiser? The me which is the past, which has accumulated so many things, insults, flatteries, pain, knowledge, suffering, can that me progress to a better state? Hello and welcome to episode 230 of Urgency of Change. Each episode of the Krishnamurti podcast features carefully chosen extracts from the archives. The aim is to represent different aspects of Krishnamurti's radical approach to many of the issues and questions we all face in our lives. This week's theme is progress. Upcoming themes are cooperation, fragmentation and symbols. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust based at Brockwood Park in Hampshire, UK. Brockwood is also home to Brockwood Park School, a unique international boarding school offering a personalised holistic education. It is deeply inspired by Krishnamurti's teaching, which encourages academic excellence, self-understanding, creativity and integrity. Please visit brockwood.org.uk for more information. You can also find our regular Krishnamurti quotes and videos on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave a review or rating on your podcast app. This helps our visibility. This week's episode on progress has five sections. This first extract is from Krishnamurti's third talk in Sarnan, 1973, and is titled, Are Human Beings Progressing? I don't know what you mean by the word progress. I believe I was told the other day the meaning of that word progress, rather interesting, to go forward. I was told originally it meant be armed and enter into the enemy's territory. You are entering into the enemy's territory, therefore be armed when you enter. You understand? <coughs> that is generally, co- that is originally, I believe, what is meant by progress. Now, what do we mean by progress? Probably the same thing, really. What do we mean by that word progress? Which means to go forward. Hmm? Is the uh, are human beings going forward? Going to the moon, living under the sea, killing, exterminating species of animals in the waters and in the air, killing each other, miserable, unhappy polluting the rivers, the air, the water, you know, destroying the earth, is that progress? Having more cars, better bathrooms, discussing at the round table of the United Nations about not to quarrel, but preparing underhand instruments of war, that's one side. 
And are we progressing well, in particular you? Are you progressing going forward? Where? To where? Self-improvement in order to go forward? Is there improvement of the Self? You following all this, sir? Uh, can I improve myself? That means time. <laughs> so looking at all this, what is progress? Or we shouldn't use that word at all. We should only use the word, if I may suggest, I'm not asking. Psychological revolution. So that the human mind is transformed. So it is no longer the me and the you. The second extract is from the first talk in Santa Monica, 1974, and is titled Where Do We Think We Are Progressing To? It's becoming more and more apparent that the world outside of us as well as inside of us is in such a chaotic, miserable, mischievous state. We don't seem to be able to do anything about it. The communists, the Marxists, the socialists, the capitalists, and the various religious groups are trying to do something. And apparently nothing seems to change the human mind and heart. We seem to be going along the same old way, in the same confusion, sorrow, and lack of utter social responsibility. And, and there have been so many schemes. The Marxists have their scheme and their ideology and their pattern of operation. And the Socialists have theirs and the Communists. And of course, the religious groups, whether they're Catholic, Protestant, or those groups that are formed around the latest guru, they don't seem to care very much what is happening outside of themselves. These religious groups seem to be concerned with their own particular little miasmic confusion and worship and authority. And the world goes on with their wars, political corruption, Big business wanting to make progress. The scientists joining the big business, and so on, of which most of us are aware. And Wherever one goes, and I've just come back from India, the 
there is an appalling state of insufficiency, both economically and religiously, and there is a great deal of poverty and a great sorrow in the world. Looking at all this, not intellectually, not superficially, not from any particular point of view, Marxist, Communist, Mao, or some other ideology, but looking at it with fairly unprejudiced, clear eyes, one is struck enormously at the utter callousness of commercialism and consumerism. These two seems to predominate the world. And progress is in the context of that. Progress means originally to enter the enemy country fully armed. That's what it meant originally, the word progress. Now, Progress seems to be the advancement of technology and consumerism, and God knows where it is leading to. The destruction of the earth, nature, pollution, and the utter depravity of selfishness. This is the actual fact that is happening in the world. And everybody talks about progress. One never asks, progress to what? Where are we going? What is it all about? One seems to never question. One may question that inwardly, inarticulately, but there is no group in the world, as far as I've been able to observe, where, which is asking, what is it all about? Where are we going? And When one does ask those questions, as the speaker has often asked some of the prominent writers, politicians, and the so-called religious groups, they seem to have no answer. They are even rather frightened if you pose that question, invariably the answer is, if they are capable of answering, future will look after itself. All that matters is that we progress towards something. Now I'm sure most of us have asked these questions I'm sure most of us want to find an answer, knowing that all governments are corrupt, some more, some less. All religions have lost their meaning, 
and any ideology, whether Marxist, Maoist, or some other ideology, is still within the pattern of what has been and what should be. What should be the response of what has been. And seeing all this, for it is at all serious, and I hope you are all serious, at least for this morning. It, see, it appears that there must be change in consciousness. That is the only thing that has any significance. A radical transformation in the content of consciousness. Because that is the only solution to the enormous problems and the complexity of our modern society. Not new ideologies, not new gurus with their absurd following and their childish traditional repetition of dead things, but a change in the very structure and the nature of consciousness, in what you think, feel, act, do, which is within the field of consciousness. The third extract is from the first question and answer meeting in Madras 1981 and is titled Can There Be Progress Without Conflict or Struggle? Without conflict or struggle in the sense of desire to improve, how can there be any progress, material or social, in the world? The desire to change supplies the motive force for, the, for work towards achievement and progress. If you accept what is, then how can there be any kind of progress? You have got the question clear? Need I read it again? Thank goodness. What do we mean by self-improvement? Improving selfishness, improving deceit, improving hypocrisy, improving our angers, anxieties, our pains, our sorrows. Is that what we mean by improving ourselves? Either imp- getting more money, more better position, all that physical comfort, or, which is necessary, obviously, but when you say self-improvement, what is the self? Would we, could we go into that? What is the self? What are you? Hmm? You have a name, you have a form, how you look, how you, how the shape of your body and so on, physical appearance. Apart from that, what are you? All that you have been taught in a school, college, university, if you have been lucky to go through that or unlucky to be gone through that, 
and what the environment has impressed upon you, upon the mind, upon the brain. You are the tradition You are all that which actually is your greed, your envy, your beliefs, your hypocrisy, say one thing and do another, your miserliness. You are all that, surely. Or do you think you are something much more than that? That is your super consciousness, super something or other. Well, if you say you are something super, super consciousness, that's also the result of thinking. So you are the whole movement of thought. Isn't that obvious? So what is there to improve? Or there is freedom from all this, not improving. That's too clear, isn't it? I can't improve my selfishness, my agony, or my sense of despair. What I what is possible is to be free of all that. Completely. I can't improve it. That's simple enough. Next question is, in the part of the question is, if I do, if there is no conflict, struggle, there will be no progress. Right? What is progress? From the bullock cart, to the jet, to the, isn't it? That's a improvement. That is a uh, progress, advancement from one state of lack of communication to an extraordinary speed of communication. That's all. There is progress in that direction. Before there was you one killed another by an arrow, now you kill it kill another or millions through an atom bomb. That's also progress, if you call that progress. But socially that is relationship between each other which is society, socially, is there progress? Or we are finding ways and means of going around laws, cheating in tax, which you're all doing, Right? The richer you are, the more cunning you become. You know, that's all progress. We call all this progress. Is there psychological progress at all? You understand my question? Progress means this is a very complex problem. This progress means from what I am, I move, change, uh, transform myself. That implies time. Progress means time. Right? We're coming to meet this. What is time? Time by the watch, time by the 
ri- ri- sun rising, sun setting, time as today, yesterday, tomorrow, time for a plant to grow, time for a baby to become mature, and so on. There is time outwardly, naturally. But is there time at all, inwardly? Please, we are investigating, you are not accepting what the speaker is saying. Is there time as psychological progress? Time as hope of tomorrow. You'll see. All the implications of this idea of progress involves time. Now, there is physical time. To learn a language, I need time. But to be free of violence, does it need time? You, you follow my question? I need time to learn a skill, to become an engineer, a carpenter, or a not straight politician. Right, sir? Yes, you know about it. But does one need time to free to be free of violence? You please find out. I'm violent. To become non violent requires time. You understand? I am violent. I to become or achieve or attain a state of non-violence is a movement from what is to what should be. That requires time. But does being free from violence require time? You understand the difference? Are we meeting each other? To become something requires time. Not to be does it require time. I am violent. Suppose I am violent. Can there be freedom from that violence without time? You know, our brains are conditioned to time. Now we are asking a question which is totally different from that conditioning, which is to be instantly free from violence. Is that possible? You understand my question? My brain is used to the idea that I will gradually get rid of my violence, which is never possible, because gradually, during the interval, I'm sowing vi- I'm being violent. It's like a man saying, "I'm trying to be non-violent," which means he's being violent all the time. Right? Is that clear? So, is it possible to be free of violence? Instantly, that is without time. Is this is the question clear? What? No, no. You see, don't, sir. Don't let's think. See, can we? Is it first of all, is it possible to be free of violence immediately, instantly? Or does it take time to be free? 
if you take time to be free, during that interval you are being violent, and therefore there is no end to violence. I don't know if you follow logically this. But if you but is it possible to be free of violence? Not in terms of time. We are saying it is possible. Which is how you observe violence. When you observe are you the observer and violence something apart from you. You understand my question? Or you are violence. You, the observer is the observed. I don't know if you are following all this. No. <laughs> no, you are not. Is anger different from me? I am anger. It's not different from me. I am greed. Greed is not different from me. Violence is not is me. I'm part of that. So but we have divided violence as something separate from me. So there is the observer who says, I am violent, therefore I must suppress it or escape it. But if you see the truth that you are violent, the very observer who says, I am violent, he is violent. So then there is there being no division, hence no conflict, and the observer is absent, there is only that state. Then you observe with all your energy and it it totally disappears. You try it, not try it, do it. Sorry, uh, forgive me for using that word try. Do it, and you will discover for yourself. So, progress outwardly, physically exists, of course. But so- socially, that is, society, is actually a relationship between human beings. Now, to understand the nature of the of relationship and the transformation in that relationship, does it require time? Or there is immediate perception, an insight which transforms the condition. The fourth extract is from Krishnamurti's third talk in Bombay, 1983, and is titled, There is no such thing as psychological progress. Time is a great factor in our life. There is time by the watch, the chronological time, and the time to learn a language, a skill, a time to achieve in this world, uh, become from a clerk to the executive person, and so on. There is time in that direction. Is there time psychologically, that is inwardly? Please inquire with me, don't accept what the speaker is saying. Is there time, which means a, prog- a progress from here to there, ideologically, 
in the sense of becoming more noble, more free of greed, anger, violence, is there in the sphere of the psyche. You understand the word psyche? This is what you are, that is, time is evolution from the seed to a tree, from the baby to a manhood, the growth, the becoming, all that implies time, time as evolution. Now we are going to question together whether there is psychological evolution at all. You understand what? Let the crows have their say. Please, one must exercise one's brain, think together, not just let the words flow, but to think clearly, not stimulated by the speaker, but to question, to find out the implication of time. This is important, because time and thought are the root of fear. And fear cannot end or fade away or be dissipated if we do not understand the nature of time and the nature of thought, which are the root, roots of all fear. So we are examining together the nature of time. There is physical time, the new moon becoming the full moon, the seed growing to a great gigantic tree. Time is necessary to learn a language, a skill. Time is necessary to accumulate knowledge. There, time is absolutely necessary. You may learn a language within a week or six months. To go from here to your house takes time, from one point to another. All physical movement, physical activity, Learning requires time. The psyche, that is, the bundle of all your thinking, of all your feelings, of all your conclusions, beliefs, gods, hope, fears, and all that, that's, a, that's the, your bundle, that's your consciousness, that's what you are. Is that clear? That's what you are. That's what your consciousness is. Your consciousness is made up of all these things, your gods, your knowledge, your faith, your hope, your fears, your pleasures, 
your conclusions, your loneliness and the great fear of sorrow, pain, all that is your consciousness. We are asking whether that consciousness has evolution at all. Evolution means becoming what you are more and more and more. Is that it? You have understood this? That is, I am greedy, envious, violent. Can greed evolve into non-greed? Or anger, loneliness become something gradually to something else? You are following all Are we making things clear? Right? Are we? Or we are all gone to sleep after a hard day? Please, this rather difficult subject, because all our tradition, all our religious training, our belief, our faith, and the, all the sacred, so-called sacred literature tell you that you will become something if you make an effort, if you strive after, if you meditate, that, from this to that, from what you are to what you should be, that is evolution. Now we are, the speaker is denying all that. You understand? The speaker is saying, greed can never become better greed. There is only the ending of something, not becoming something. You understand? You, most of you, probably believe in reincarnation. I don't know why, fairly obvious why. Why you believe in it? That is, from this life to next life, where you will have better opportunities, where you will be a little bit nobler, where you will have little more comfort, more enlightenment, that is, from what you are to become what you should be. That's called evolution. The speaker is questioning that. He said, there is no such thing as psychological evolution. You have to understand the nature of that statement, what is implied, that Enlightenment, deep perception of that which is true, that which is beyond time, is not through progress, through a continuity. So there is no movement as evolution of the psyche. Which means there is no becoming. I don't become noble. I don't achieve enlightenment. 
if I practice, if I strive, if I deny this and control my and so on, which is gra- gradation in achievement. The final extract in this episode is from the fourth talk in San Francisco, 1973, and is titled Progress in Meditation. Meditation is a process of life in which relationship with each other is is clear without any conflict. Meditation is the understanding of fear, pleasure. Meditation is <coughs> the thing called love and the freedom from death, which we talked about yesterday more. And the freedom to stand completely alone. And that's one of the greatest things in life. Because if you cannot stand alone, you're not free. I mean, stand alone inwardly, psychologically. That aloneness is not isolation, a withdrawal from the world. That aloneness comes into being when you totally negate, actually, not verbally, but do it actually with your life, all the things that man has put together in his fear, in his pleasure, in his search for something that is beyond this daily routine of life. Then you will see if you have gone that far, that you are, that the mind not having any illusion, not following anybody, and therefore be free of all sense of authority. It's only such a mind can open the door It's only such a mind that can see if there is or if there is not a sense, a timeless quality. Therefore it's important to understand the whole, the question of time. Obviously there is the daily chronological time, we're not talking about that. It's very simple and clear. But is there psychological time, the time of tomorrow, that is, I will be something, or I will attain, I will succeed. The idea of time being from here to there, Or is it an invention of thought? This whole idea of progress. There is obviously progress. 
which unfortunately the business world has turned into profit. There is progress from the bullock car, the wheel, to the jet. But is there psychological progress? The me becoming better, nobler, wiser. The me, which is the past, please follow this little bit if you are interested. The me which is the past, the me which has accumulated so many things, the insults, flatteries, pain, knowledge, suffering, the me has that, can that progress to better state. And advance from here to the better. <coughs> Time is necessary <coughs> to become something. Time is necessary. But is there such a thing as becoming something? Will you? become something better. Better in the sense, better me. More, the me more nobler. The me less conflict. But the me is the entity that separates the me and the not me, the we and they, the me as the American and the me as the Hindu or the Russian or whatever it is. So is the me, can the me ever become better? Or The me has to cease completely and never think in terms of the better or become something more. When you admit the more, the better, you are denying the good. So. Meditation is the total negation of the me. So that the mind is never in conflict. And the mind, when it's not in conflict, is not in that state of peace which is the interval between two conflicts, but a peace, I don't like to use that word peace, but a quality of mind that is free from total conflict. And that is part of meditation. And when you have understood the whole, understood the psychological tie, then the mind has space. Have you noticed how little space we have, both physically and inwardly? Living in large cities, in cupboards, in narrow space, we become more violent because we need space physically. Psychologically also, have you noticed how little space we have inwardly? Because we have, our minds are crowded. 
with imagination, with all the things that we have learned, with the various forms of conditioning, the influence, the propaganda, we are full of all the things that man has thought about, invented, our own desires, pursuits, ambitions, fears, and so on. It is full. And therefore, very little space. And meditation, if you go into it very deeply, is the negation of all this. So that there is in that state of attention, there is vast space without boundary. Then the mind is silent. You know, probably you have learned from others that you must go through a system of meditation so that the mind becomes silent. That is practice in order to achieve silence, to attain silence. Practice in order to become enlightened, which is called meditation. And that such kind of meditation is sheer nonsense. Because when you practice, you see what happens, don't you, that there is the entity that is practicing over and over and over again, becoming mechanical, more and more and more mechanical, therefore limited, insensitive, dull. And why should you practice? Why should you allow another to come between you and your inquiry? Why should the priest or your guru or your book come between you and what you want to find out? Is it fear? Is it that you want somebody to encourage you? Is it that you lean on somebody when you are yourself uncertain? And when you are uncertain, and when you lean on somebody for certainty, you may be quite sure that you are choosing somebody who is equally uncertain. And therefore, the person who leave, whom, on whom you leave maintains that he is very certain. He says, I know, I have achieved, I am the way, follow me. So, be very careful. Be Beware of a man who says he knows. Enlightenment is not a fixed place. There is no fixed place. All that one has to do is to understand the chaos, the disorder in which we live. In the understanding of that, we have order. There comes clarity, there comes certainty. And that certainty is not the invention of thought, 
that certainty is intelligence. And when you have all this, when the mind sees all this very clearly, then the door opens. What lies beyond is not nameable. 